Good evening, everyone. I am Nishal Shukla from Team Textman, and I welcome you all to today's live webinar on the insights into India's FDI regulations with case studies, tips, and practical strategies. But before we proceed, I shall take this opportunity to briefly introduce Textman. We are India's leading publisher of tax and corporate laws, committed to offering our users the most authentic and enriching experience. Our goal is to simplify the research and compliance for the legal community. And now, everyone, please welcome our esteemed speaker, C. N. Nikisha. She is highly experienced business consultant and C. S. U. advisor who operates from a unique vantage point of combining her experience. as an investment banker chartered accountant business advisor and registered value her expertise includes helping companies raise capital getting their finance and compliances in order and creating values in their businesses she is she is also passionate speaker presenter and content creator having spoken at various conferences and events her favorite topic includes creating value from ideas and making companies investor ready Before we begin, here are a few tips for the audience. Your mic will be on mute during the session. However, you can post your queries in the chat box provided. The speaker will answer your queries either during or after the session. A copy of this presentation will be sent to you via email for future reference. Without further ado, I would request the speaker to address the audience. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Nishal. um uh, i hope i am audible to everybody and uh, first of all let me congratulate all of you uh, to join today on an occasion of eid and a uh, holiday so it's uh, super thankful that all of you decided to enrich your knowledge on the topic of fema uh, because today's topic is going to be quite interesting we're talking about foreign direct investment and since you have spent your time and joined here let's understand why this topic is important for all of us what i understand and believe most of the people joining in here are chartered accountants and i believe practicing chartered accountants can we just take a moment so that when i'm explaining i have an idea of whom i'm talking to can we take a minute to post in the chat box whether you are a practicing chartered accountant or you are a ca in industry or you are somebody who is an entrepreneur himself So one is the CA in industry, one is a CA in practice, or an entrepreneur. Can we just know whom we are going to be talking to? So accordingly, we will be uh, taking our topic. Okay. So I have in practice, I have in industry. Yes, CS in practice is also fine. So we need to know just basically whether in practice or in industry, so that accordingly we can take it up. Thank you so much for people who are putting in. in practice in practice super so i see a mix uh, a lot mix from company secretaries in practice and a couple of them in cs in practice too that should be good for us to at least have an idea of how we move forward so uh, why fdi so fdi has been a topic which is really important because we have been reading it in newspapers constantly we have been saying okay this company got this funding that company got that funding and a huge number of inflow of funds comes into india uh, via the foreign direct investment or the foreign currency uh, the sectors that have been attracting most fdi is been the service sector if you would see a report as on if december 23 5187 million dollars अब कम इन टू इंडिया बोलते बोलते ही मेरा मुंह ऐसे लगता है यार ये तो बहुत बड़ा नंबर हो जा रहा है यस सो मच इन्वेस्टमेंट हैज कम इन टू इंडिया इन स्पेशली इन टू द सर्विस सेक्टर अ लॉट ऑफ एफ डी आई हैज फ्लोन इन टू वेरियस स्टेट्स बी इट मेजरली इन द स्टेट्स ऑफ महाराष्ट्र कर्नाटका एंड गुजरात एंड देन द लीडिंग स्पेस इज दिल्ली सो दिस आर द फोर मेजर सिटीज विच कंट्रीब्यूट टू द एफ डी आई इज कमिंग इन बट वाई आर वी डिस्कसिंग दिस we are discussing this because way forward what we are also seeing is that our modi ji's government has been promising us ki acche din aayenge 
and at the same time acche din for investors to come in which means he is also promised that you're going to have cheaper funding coming from out of india which is where they are seeing that lots more fdi is going to be attracted towards india yes this has been the story but not a story which is true in the recent past couple of months in fact in the recent past couple of months which we talk about from jan to march we have seen that there has been a downfall into the fdi flowing into india uh, mainly reason being that you know we are still at a pre election stage there is a steep decline in the transactions in the developed economy also they are also struggling because of which there is a downfall in the uh, money coming in into india but if you ask me according to me this is just a temporary phase and uh, we expect to have a higher inflow of funds coming into india and if that is the situation we as the pillars of compliances for fema in india need to be on our toes ready with our knowledge of the regulation and aware of what are those norms that we need to fulfill and make sure that our client is not making any default because any default with the rbi authorities is um, is a little tricky you know at times there are provisions wherein you know only you pay the lsf which is a late submission fee and you are done away with not a bigger trouble but we've also had cases wherein the clients have had bigger troubles because they did not follow the compliances at the first place uh, since the knowledge of fema rbi regulations is limited there is a uh, reason because of which the non compliances also become more stringent and a little more complicated to handle that's why let's take today around 50 minutes and deep dive into what is the regulation what is the law and at the same time i will try and share a few case studies uh, which are the practical state studies which we have dealt with over the past years and what are the practical challenges and difficulties that people have been facing uh, i will rather love to spend more time there because that is something which you will be able to get practical hands on insights of how actual cases happen so let's go ahead and dive deeper so now first of all what is fdi so let's understand once an fdi comes into picture who are the governing bodies that you need to look upon and what are the basic regulations that you need to do see as i always say fema per se is a very very small act fema act is a seven page document not much uh, but it does not have any more things in it because it is basically governed by the rules and regulations so again here also fema is governed by rules which is a non debt rules which is given by central government which is of late just as older as 2019 then you have master direction which is been given by rbi who is similar to what has been given in the non debt rules but non debt rules are the main rules that govern and then you have the dpiit who comes up with the consolidated fdi policy so basically when you look into fdi you will say hey what is allowed what is not allowed if i want to know that i need to go to non debt rules if i want to know which sector you are allowing which sector how much permissions are there if you want to see that policy you need to go to the consolidated fdi policy so this is the general framework of how fdi works or rather how the fema works as i mentioned no law under fema is going to be independent of itself in terms of one regulation so majorly all that you want to look into you will get covered under the non debt rules but at the same time if there are reporting a couple of reporting will be reported under different regulations which will be like separately gone which is under the separate reporting regulations now entry into india so let's take an example that you are getting a client who is not based out of india a foreign client and he says that i want to uh and i want to live uh, you know open up a company into india then in that case what is the steps what are the questions that we going to be asking them so the first question we will ask them is you want to set up your business into which sector that will be our first question to that foreign client reason being in india there are two ways of investing or coming into india the first way is an automatic route the second way is the government approval route automatic route means rbi or the government says if you want to set up a business in india i have already laid down my rules and regulations just follow those rules and regulations 
and you are allowed to come into India and intimate me once you have come to India. That is the process under automatic. In the second is the government route, which says that if you want to bring uh, your funds into India in particular sectors, which are the sectors which, you know, government has put some restrictions, then in that case, before coming to India, you need to take permission from them. That is the approval route. Uh, there are sectors which are specified that will get covered under the approval route for which you need to go to the ministry, take the approval and then only do the uh, investments. Whereas under the automatic route, most of the sectors which are liberated, you can bring funds into India in those sectors. There is only intimation that you need to do to RBI about the funds coming in within the stipulated time period. It's a faster process. Our experience says 95% or maybe even higher than 95% of the cases that come into India are under automatic. Because there are very few sectors that are today under the government approval. Though, even if I say this, this may not be true in terms of the value of investments because there are a lot of huge value of investments coming into India in those sectors which are restricted, uh, which happens through the government. Now, the sectors, now this is just a glimpse, okay, because there are a whole lot of sectors, hence just the sectors to know which are the sectors under the government route or the negative list. Negative list are the sectors where pe permission allowed hi nahi hai. Irrespective, do not even take the effort to come to us for us is what the government is saying. Agriculture mein karna hai, kisi ko allowed nahi. Atomic energy allowed nahi. Lottery betting allowed nahi. Though, agriculture mein kuch sectors pe they have allowed so that will be covering under the permission list something which is specifically not allowed that will go completely under the negative list then you have mining it financial service jaise service industries all of that get covered under the automatic now here the regulation also says that jo entities negative list mein nahi hai, government approval risk mein nahi hai, all those entities will get covered under the automatic so if you are not able to identify specifically your client's ka sector into the list, then do not worry. That's a good news, which means you are still under, you are under automatic route. You do not worry about. But if it is mentioned, then in those sectors, you need to make sure that those sectors ki limits is what you fulfill. Like for example, pe we are seeing uh, print sector only 26%, which means if you want to invest about 26%, you will need to take approval. At times, up to 26, also you need to take approval route. If it is mentioned, up to 26, government approval. We'll go deeper in this part when we go to the sectoral caps. Rent. So don't worry on it. This is just a glimpse to have an idea. Now we move to the entity types. As we all know, India has got, or rather a lot of other countries also have got multiple entity structures. So the primary entity structure is proprietorship concern. When a one person opens his own company, that's a proprietorship concern. Suppose that you move to a partnership firm, which can be two people opening up their company, uh, partnership firm, uh, maybe a registered partnership firm, but yet not regulated as hard as other entities. So third is an LLP, limited liability partnership, more regulated than the other previous two. Fourth one can be a company, a private limited company or a listed entity, but a company which is registered with the company tax. And now the new latest is the investment vehicles, which can be the rates or AIFs and likes of those. So these are a couple of entities which are eligible. Now, when I mean proprietorship concern, obviously proprietorship concern in itself is not going to get an investment. If you look at partnership firms, then what we're trying to say here is an NRI or an OCI may invest on proprietorship basis and NRI can start their business. A lot of time we get this question that I'm an NRI and I want to open up my business in India. Am I allowed to under a proprietorship concern? The answer would be you will have to do it on non-repatriation basis. Now, what is the meaning of non-repatriation basis? Can anybody from the participants just use the chat box and tell me what is a non-repatriation basis? Quickly, one word telling me uh, what is it that you will not be allowed when you say that this investment is a non-repatriation basis? Absolutely cool, superb. Seems like, okay, I have not bored you to that till now. All the answers are absolutely right. So I believe my audience has definitely has the basic knowledge of 
FEMA and the repatriation, non-repatriation terms of it, that would be great. So yes, when we mean non-repatriation basis is, you can use the funds in India, but you cannot take the funds outside of India. That is the basic concept of non-repatriation. Obviously, once the law is made, there are ways to break it too. So yes, even if the funds are on non-repat basis, there are ways to take it out. But we're not going to be discussing any of it right now. And there are legal ways, by, by the way. Uh, so yes, uh, uh, partnership firms you want to invest, it will be based on non-repat basis. Rest, if you put an investment into LLP or you're going to be investing in terms of uh, company, you have the option of investing on repat basis, which means you can take back the funds outside India. Not only the principal, but the profits that you have earned over it, you can take it back outside. Now, first, understanding what are the uh, investment vehicles or entity that are eligible. Let's dive into what are the instruments that are the eligible instruments. Very, very important point here because we as started accountants have been here very, very creative and given multiple options to the clients of creating different, different uh, instruments which are eligible. Yes, sorry, instruments pe RBI ne kuch saalo pehle rok dal di. Saying, boss, stop being more creative. I'm giving you only three options. If you want to bring funds into India in terms of FDI, I'm only giving you three options. One, you bring it as pure, simple vanilla equity shares. Second, you bring it as compulsory convertible debentures or compulsory convertible preference shares. Obviously, share warrants is there, but I'm not going into share warrants so common because share warrants is something which is regulated by SEBI, you know, as says, are those issued by an Indian company, no one since with the regulations of SEBI. So I'm not going to be discussing too much on the share warrant front, but yes, equity, CCDs and CCPS. Earlier, uh, we chartered accountants, company secretaries, lawyers have given multiple options to bring in variety of FDI. Now RBI has said, boss, stop, nothing doing. If your instrument is in the nature of compulsory convertible debenture or a compulsory convertible preference shares or a plain simple vanilla equity share, then only it will be considered as eligible equity. It will be considered as equity the moment you bring in an optionality clause into it, you know, or an optionally convertible or an optionally convertible preference share or non-redeemable preference shares or non-convertible debentures. All of this will go into the criteria of debt and not into equity. Now, this is something very, very interesting. You need to be very clear if you're putting in a convertible clause, make sure you have a compulsory convertible option also being mentioned. Although this is fine, but at the same time, if it is equity, RBI is allowing you to have paid up capital partly. Well, if you can have fully paid up capital, of course, you can also have partly paid up capital, but a limited period. Then you have to make it fully capital, fully paid up within a period of 12 months is what they say, but okay, itna to wo log allow. So that was in terms of understanding of the instrument. Wonderful. Now we know, okay, which is the entity. So one is ideally the most favorable ones are LLP and private limited companies. The second one we came to know is what are the instruments? So we said equity instrument. We said compulsory convertible preference shares or compulsory convertible debentures. These are basically the instruments uh, which can, which are usually part of FDI. Yes, definitely. Warrants are also FDI. Somebody is asking a question. Yes, Jitendra, warrants are FDI uh, because they are also an eligible instrument that you can use if issued to a person resident outside India. I hope I don't need to define, but I would still go ahead and say who is a person resident outside India. Uh, you have to go back to section U, 2U and 2V, which defines a person resident outside India and a person resident in India. Uh, if you are on those criteria, that will be the definition. Now, as we said, instrument decide. Ho gaya. Now, one more important aspect where a lot of breach happens that needs to be known is the rights and the bonus issue. So, like, yaar, basic paisa to, shares to issue kar diye because they brought in money and we issued them shares. That's fine. What about the bonus wherein they are actually not bringing in any money and the company is issuing them shares? Is that allowed? Because India mein paisa nahi aur share de rahe ho. So, chalega kya? so, yes, RBI is saying by allowed hai. Uh, the only thing that you need to make sure is uh, E for both, for bonus and right issue. It says if you are holding the shares, uh, then you can issue them the right issue also. 
just make sure if it is of an unlisted company then the right issue should not be the price at a price which is lower than at what you give it to the should not be offered at a price less than what you are offering to the resident matlab unko cheaper mat becho non resident ko bhi equal rakho as you are giving it to a resident so that is one secondly if it is listed company right issue to person resident will be determined by the company uh, thirdly right issue and bonus issue both of these issues you need to report boss make sure you don't uh, make mistake here whatever you do it you need to report the right issue and the bonus issues too uh, guys i am seeing a couple of questions coming in the q and a keep pouring your questions we will take all your questions in the end of the seminar one together but you can keep posting your question as and when you have on the topic uh, any doubt during the conversation as well so that's what it is uh, offer must be in compliance with the companies act in compliance with the fema and reporting needs to be done in this scenario yes you need you are allowed to have the uh, remo- uh, you have the issue of rights and bonus both done esop on the full one more question that comes up esop can are we allowed to give esop and people want to give esop not only to their employees abroad but also to their holding companies employees or their subsidiary companies employees all the places all these options are available what happens is practically let's get practical okay here what happens is uh, there is an indian company most of the times the structure that we used to see till now was there is a holding company which is based out of singapore or some tax haven country and they have a subsidiary in india that's how the fdi structure used to happen the value used to get created in the holding company now the indian subsidiary company wants to issue shares as eso to its employee employee bolega yaar indian company ke shares deke kya fayda give me the shares of the foreign company that is the where the worth is getting created or it can have vice versa because now i am sure all of you reading newspapers must be seeing that most of the startups that had gone outside india and had their uh, holding company structures in singapore are now trying to do a reverse flip and trying to get their holding companies in india a uh, reverse flip is something a good amount of deal and structuring is happening of late in this area trying to bring all those companies and having a subs- uh, holding structure in india nowadays is uh, is talk of the town but in those scenarios also people would want to have that give me the esop for the company which has value irrespective i am the employee of a holding company or the subsidiary company uh, boss i have seen that whatever may be the situation rbi is student enough in the commercial circumstances they will make sure that yes commercially whatever is viable is being allowed in such cases what you want to say is yes esop is allowed to employees of indian company or foreign company whichever way all you need to do is make sure you do the compliances there is a hell lot of compliance for esop two different reportings needs to be done make sure you do those reporting and the third important thing here is not only the reporting at the time of receipt reporting at the time of sale is also very very important uh, we are currently dealing with a case wherein a listed entity has issued esop to its foreign employees and uh, whenever the sale is done by the foreign employees there is no reporting that is done a lot of consultants are not aware that yes when the shares are sold by an nr even if the shares are of the listed entity there is a reporting uh, that needs to be done needs to be done in form fc trs um which is not done if that is not done company at times gets into a lot of trouble currently we are dealing with a case when rbi is literally screwing the company asking them to pull out the data of last 40 years because the company has not done the esop compliances and at the same time a lot of their employees have sold shares and they have not done the reporting so the company ka shareholding structure is not correctly reported in the rbi's portal so all of this is a big mess make sure this does not happen and hence all reporting that done on time even in case of esop now we move forward as we are seeing forward pricing guidelines this is the core when it comes to uh, fdi so what is the core we said kisko leke jayenge kis entity mein which instruments now it comes to india's perspective making sure we are not getting any uh, uh you know anything loss at our end so what is the issue price ka mechanism so one thing very clear is india se agar aap bech rahe ho and you are issuing shares to a person who is resident outside india then the value should be higher 
then whatever is the fair value or whatever is the value which is determined by whom who are allowed to do the valuations so first of all we said okay valuation of the company is required second stage we say who can do the valuation of that shares or that equity instrument okay if ccd is being issued that valuation done of a ccd you will need a valuation report of a ccd who are the person eligible to do the valuation chartered accountant cost accountant sebi registered merchant bank category 1 merchant bank they are the one who are allowed in case of unlisted entity even in case of listed entity you have to determine the price that is determined by the sebi regulation if you are uh, transferring so first of all what is the first way is first of all what happens is the shares come into india now if you are issuing the shares from uh, uh, issuing the shares of a freshly made company you know newly made company then there is subscription to mor they are putting in the funds as subscription to mor in such scenario now you don't require a valuation report uh, approximately 8 to 9 years earlier there was a need for a valuation report in that situation also but since i think around 10 years se to rbi ne wo requirement hata diya hai now you don't need a valuation report where in the funds are being coming in as a subscription to the moa in other cases you know when the company is already into existence and funds are flowing in in that scenario you will need to get a valuation report in place and the valuation report pe share should be issued at a price higher than the valuation report now the second scenario comes that when there is a transfer so this was company is issuing the shares funds are coming into the company second way of doing the fdi is when in there is transfer that is happening which means i and my husband or i and my partner together opened up a company in india now we have a foreigner coming in or a person resident outside india coming in and wanting to take stake in our company we have two options one we bring the fund in the company and issue the shares second is we sell our stake to that person in which case what happens is it is a transfer from a resident to a non resident from a resident to a person resident outside india in which case the form that needs to be filed changes but the pricing guidelines remain the same that since a resident is selling to a non resident and the shares are of indian company make sure you are selling it at a higher price than the fair value now we come ulta what happens is now there is a person who is already an owner of a foreign uh, person resident outside india is holding the shares in an indian company he wants to transfer it to us who is a resident in that case we say boss humko sasta do valuation ki jo value hai usse kam mein we have to buy so if a resident is buying it should be at a lower price this is the just of the pricing guidelines once we know the pricing guidelines which is determined or based upon the valuation you will be able to arrive at the share price a uh, swap of equity shares you need to get both the company's valued and through a merchant banker and get the value subscription to moa as i said you don't need a valuation share warrants their pricing and the price or the conversion formula should be determined up front this is the most important thing now two more question that comes up and one question i am able to see in the chat box also is what will be the case wherein it is transfer from non resident to non resident now in that case ashish was happens is a transfer from non resident to another non resident rbi says whatever value you want to do do it i don't worry because mere ko kuch nahi milne wala hai india mein paisa nahi aane wala hai so rbi is not worried at what price you are going to be transferring you can do the transfer at whatever value you want but do not forget to pay tax over it in india so taxation and taxable liability is what you need to take care of all other tam duty etc whatever compliances are there that you need to take care only what we are trying to say here this that pricing guidelines is not applicable and you can determine the price that you want but compliances to tam duty tax liability in terms of maybe you know whatever tax is required to be paid that all needs to be taken care of tds whatever all of that needs to be taken care of now the question comes up to uh uh that what will not be able to, uh, where one case scenario where it won't be applicable is a scenario of non repatriation if somebody is investing the shares on non repatriable basis in that scenario pricing guidelines will not apply and a simple logic of why it won't apply is because uh, uh that investment is not considered as fdi it is considered at par with domestic investment and in that case uh obviously no regulations of fdi or pricing guidelines will be applicable moving forward 
let's understand what are the forms that needs to be filed. The forms that needs to be filed is first is if the funds are coming in India and the shares are being issued, sorry, if the funds are coming in the company and shares are being issued, in that case, form FCGPR needs to be filed. If conversion is happening from equity, uh, from ECB to equity or other convertible instruments which are allowed, all such scenarios, FCGPR needs to be filed. Timeline is within 30 days. Second is, obviously, you need to file an FLA return. This is for a company which has received FTI. You need to file uh, FLA returns. A company is, when I say company, I also mean LLP. So even if an LLP has received FDI, then FLA return needs to be filed. If there is a transfer which is happening from NR, which is non-resident to resident or resident to non-resident, both the scenarios from FCTRS needs to be filed. Uh, FCTRS and FCGPR is for company. The moment you move to LLP, it is LLP1 form and LLP2 form respectively for the same purposes. Then you have LEC, FII, purchase transfer of capital instruments by FPIs on stock exchanges in India. Then you have DI, which is downstream investment. And you have CN, which is for convertible notes. Most widely, what we see is FLA returns majority of the times all the companies having FLA needs to file it. FCGPR, FCTR is two common forms which are required to file. Major business coming from those areas for us practicing people. Uh, LLP, LLP1, LLP2 also happening. Uh, but I will say the proportion of FCGPR and FCTRS is higher. Now, when we are looking at all of this, all the people who are listening to this and at the same time thinking over it and having questions will definitely have a question, Nikki, what to do when there is an NR to NR transfer? How many people had this question? Ah, Vinita was smart. Vinita had that question. Congratulations, Vinita. You were listening and equally learning at the same time. Uh, yes, Ajay, this PPT will be available to you. Uh, but let's focus on learning at this moment. Uh, so, yes, that question is quite important because I said that in NR to NR, there is a need uh, for, uh, there is a need that is there for tax liability, stamp duty. Yes, are questions I gave. So, the question is, why NR to NR report? Because RBI ki books mein ya RBI ke uh, data mein, so, uh, you know, the older one which is reported via FCGPR, FCTRS will be reflected. So, what to do? So, as of date, RBI has not given any form for filing for NR to NR transfer. Uh, practically, what we have seen is uh, we keep, uh, we have a board resolution because company ke shares transfer ho rahe, So, company will have a board resolution in place and the foreign buyer will also have a board resolution about acquisition and we'll have a board resolution about transfer in place. That board resolution is what is used when we do the next transaction. That is where this board resolutions are used for reporting. Uh, but there is practically no reports. Uh, Naveen, I would request if you have any question, please put it in the Q&A because I will not be going through the chat box for the question answer session. Any questions that you have, please use the Q&A option that is available. We'll make sure to uh, answer all the questions in the Q&A. For me to go back to the chat box and see it would be a little difficult. Okay, now we move to the practical aspect of it, which is the case study part. Post the case studies, we are going to be discussing. So we'll take another 10, 15 minutes on the case studies. Last 15 minutes, we're going to be talking upon the three aspects. One is the sectors. Second is the FPI part of it. And the third is going to be the DI, which we'll be touching in another 15, 20 minutes. And we'll spend 10 minutes on the case studies because case studies are going to be talking to you about the practical challenges and the practical difficulties that you have once you are taking up the assignments on any of the reportings of FDI, uh, which can be FCGPR, FCTRS, or LLPs and likes of that. So the first, uh, <clears throat> uh, let me tell you like this, um, most of the companies, you know, which have this default, I have had this case coming up, you know, this this constant uh, um, non-compliance coming up. Uh, out of 10, I would say three cases are comes up with this non-compliance, wherein uh, the company is incorporated in India. And in this case, it was in, you know, 2018. The companies was allotted the shares and uh, uh, on 2019, subscription to the MOD, but company received the funds much later, uh, after the allotment. Now, the company had surplus share application money after the shares were allotted. 
नो फेमा कम्प्लायसेज वर डन नाउ यहाँ पे इफ यू विल सी ऑन द बेस ऑन द फैक्ट देर इज नॉट वन बट देर इज टू नॉन कम्प्लायसेज कैन एनी बडी पर्सन वॉट आर द टू नॉन कम्प्लायसेज देट आर देर इन दिस केस Come on, guys. Think, think, think. I'm actually cheating you. Just using this couple of seconds to, you know, just ease out myself and have a sip of water. I hope I'm not going too fast. Okay. Um. I am getting answers saying non-reporting of receipt of funds. Uh, allotment can happen cannot happen before receipt of funds. Yes, Kushal, absolutely right. The first thing that you need to look into. Yes, FCGPR नहीं बरा वो तो सही है. गलती है कि उसने FCGPR form नहीं बला है. And ma'am, it is not Harshit. So it's not form FC. Form FC बोलोगे तो पूरा change हो जाएगा. There is one other form FC which is under the ODI provisions. तो हियर इट इज स्पेसिफिकली फॉर्म एफ सी बी आर आई नो लंबा है पर हमें पूरा ही बोलना पड़ेगा क्योंकि फॉर्म एफ सी पूरा फॉर्म ही चेंज हो जाएगा डोंट वरी अर्षित आई एम हियर टू जस्ट लेट यू नो ऑन दैट एंड वी कैन ऑब्वियसली हैव अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ फन एलिमेंट आल्सो सो यस नॉन रिपोर्टिंग इज अ नॉन कंप्लायंस बट द बिगर नॉन कंप्लायंस इज दैट यू हैव इशूड द शेयर्स बिफोर द फंड्स हैव कम इन पिक्चर सो दैट्स द बिगेस्ट नॉन कंप्लायंस इफ देयर सब्सक्राइबर्स टू ए एम ओ ए देयर सब्सक्राइबर्स But you are not issuing them the share. Issue of the shares, physical issue of the shares should happen after the funds have come into it. That is the first point. Second point is uh, yes, they have not reported. And the third point here is they have not returned the money. The excess share application money needs to be refunded. Uh, now there is timeline which has been prescribed and the amount also. If you would go. देर इज अप टू टेन थाउजेंड तक ही पैसा है तो ठीक है आरबीआई अलाउ करता है रिफंड मत करो राइट ऑफ कर लो चलेगा बियॉन्ड दैट एवरी रुपी नीड्स टू बी रिफंडेड एंड इफ इन योर केस देर इज अ डीले इन रिफंड एंड द डीले इन रिफंड इज हायर वेर इन लाइक इन आर केस दिस क्लाइंट हैड कम टू अस इन द योर आई थिंक ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री तीन चार साल हो गया तो बैंकर वुड नॉट अलाउ यू टू डू द रिफंड विदाउट परमिशन यू नो फर्स्ट यूल टू गो टू आर बी आई take the rbi's permission for refund then go ahead and do the refund once you have done the refund then and then only you will be able to do the fcgpr reporting unless till that time rcgpr ka reporting bhi aap nahi kar paoge because your uh, see what happens is um, banker now when you bring in the funds there is a code which gets attached to your money flowing in if you would have dealt with such case you know that the moment funds hits your bank account banker will give you a call hey ma'am there is a fund in your account can you please tell me this is against what so the moment you say it is against fees or you know either you have as we charter accounts have received fees from foreign clients wahan pe code aa jayega which is attached to the fees ka code ki this is consideration fees the moment you say it is for equity share capital there is a specific code jaise s007 p0076 ye codes hai wo code attach ho jata hai that is tracking the money that has flown in Now वो ट्रैकिंग द मनी आर बी आई नीड्स क्लियर ट्रैक ऑफ ओके दस लाख डॉलर आया था आठ लाख डॉलर का शेयर अलॉट हुआ दो लाख डॉलर रिफंड हुआ अगर वो पूरा ट्रेल कम्प्लीट नहीं है आपका रिपोर्टिंग कम्प्लीट नहीं होता दैट इज वाई इफ देर इज अ केस ऑफ रिपोर्ट रिफंड पहले बिफोर यू डू द कम्प्लायस रिफंड विल बी रिक्वायर्ड बिकॉज आपका एफ आई आर सी इज रिपोर्टिंग हंड्रेड डॉलर कमिंग इन Your FCGPR is reporting only eighty dollars being issued, twenty dollar खड़ा है, तो वो reporting incomplete है. That is why bankers will insist पहले refund करो, refund किया जैसे ही your compliance is reporting requirement reduced from hundred minus twenty reported eighty, and that eighty is being sufficed by the FCGPR. That is the logic, and hence that three step needs to be completed. Let's move to the next case study. case number 2 which is a missing kyc a big pain uh, rather the biggest pain in the ass is about the kyc now if i would request uh, people if you are uh, advising your clients now let me tell you the facts of the case first now what happened here is company a was based in india it has received an investment from a foreign investor say xyz 
uh, against which equity shares are allocated. Now, fresh issue of shares uh, necessitated filing of FCGPR, obviously. However, FCGPR ke liye you need KYC and KYC is given by the bank. Now, KYC may sabse badi trouble ye hoti hai ki people don't know the behind story ki KYC generate kaise hota hai. So, process is like, you know, your investor will go to the bank, submit the documents and based on that submission of the documents, the remittance will take place and India account will get hit with the funds. But lot of foreign countries may zyada compliances ke much much nahi hai. So, aise hi fund transfer ho jata hai. But India needs a six pointer KYC, which means if your foreign client or your investor had not filled that six pointer KYC and submitted it with other documents to their local bank, our Indian bank ko documents nahi milenge. So, our Indian bank sends a swift code, which needs to be accepted by the foreign bank. Wo foreign bank wo swift code ko accept nahi karti hai. And jaise hi wo swift code ko accept nahi karti hai, in that scenario, we KYC nahi milta hai. Aur jaise hume KYC nahi milta hai, humara compliance attack jata It is impossible to do a compliance without an KYC. Hence, I suggest, that if you are getting uh, being appointed or you are allowed to be a part of this transaction beforehand, make sure that you tell your foreign investor that six pointer KYC ka jo document hai, which is a very, very basic document, just ask you about your name, your relationship with the bank, how long you have your account with the bank, and your rest passport number and all those basic details. Six pointer KYC bhar ke submit kar do. Then and then only you will be able to receive an KYC here from your local bank. Otherwise, you are welcoming a lot of stuff. Uh, compliance, uh, sorry, compliance on bonus shares. As I had mentioned earlier, make sure that you do the compliance of bonus shares. We have dealt, uh, I think I have said we are dealing with a case wherein uh, the bonus shares were issued on ESOPs. So, ESOP shares ka compliance kar diya. Uske baad bonus shares jo issue ke uska compliance nahi kiya. So, jab ar, wo banda bechne jayega, he won't be allowed to sell his shares because his shares are not reflected in the RBI portal only. So, make sure you do the compliances for bonus shares also. Delay in filing of uh, FCTRS. Now, a person, uh, a person of Indian origin held the shares of XYZ on non-repack basis. Now, he was granted permission by RBI to convert his investment uh, into repatriation basis for transfer to some XYZ company, which is a non-resident company. Now, wherever, you have to understand, the moment RBI has allowed you, your investment, which was a non-repat, now has moved to a repat. So, the moment now the transfer is from repatriable to non-repatriable, resident to non-resident, in all such scenarios, filing of FCTRS is a must. If FCTRS filing is not done in such cases, then currently the scenario is late submission fee is what you need to file. But if the delay means you are filing, say after a year or two years, ke baat ka case agar aap aap submit kar rahe ho, to sirf LSF se nahi pad jata hai. Your case is also being sent to compound. Or obviously, wo provision to hai 2019 ke baad wale case yaha pe 2019 se pehle wale case sare compounding mein jai sakte hai. Now, uh, non-refund of excess share application money, I just said that it is compulsory that you refund the uh, excess share application money within the timeline. If you fail to do so, you will have to take RBI permission and get the refund in place. Uh, fund transfer from the NRO to NRE account, uh, who is a non-resident transferred equity of an unlisted company to AB Private Limited, AB Private Limited, transferred the sales considered to Mr. X's NRO account. Is Mr. AB liable for any compliances to be done? What are compliances if sales considered is transferred to the NRE? See, you have to understand one thing here is all the transactions which happen from a non-resident to a resident account or a non-repack to repack and repack to non-repack, in all those scenarios, filing is a compulsory. This is a case which I need to focus a lot upon is where uh, today, people have been using different uh, international money transfer. Rather, two months back, we had a case wherein a huge fund of had flown uh, for FDI, but the payment they used to transfer the funds was this XC, 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 International Money Transfer. 
now what happens is internationally investors are used to not going to bank and they would want to transfer via using some of this kind of platforms but it is very very uh, um, painsome for us because this kind of platforms are not providing FIRC copies because they are platforms and they do not provide FIRC copy because they are uh, you know this money exchanger platform they transfer the funds into our India's account in terms of rupees and when they do it in terms of rupees the Indian bank accounts are not capable to share uh, what do you call FIRC copy because FIRC, they are able to share only and only in scenario when there is a uh, money is being hit in a foreign currency. Unless the money is hit in foreign currency, you cannot uh, have a, you will not have an FIRC copy. And FIRC is one of the key documents required to do any of the filings. Hence, avoid, completely avoid funds being received through this kind of exchanges. Though Payoneer, PayPal, these are all the platforms which are allowed because they transfer the funds into the Indian bank account in foreign currency, not in Indian rupees, which is why the Indian banking can issue your FIRC. I would suggest the best would be to transfer the funds via a normal banking channel and get the funds in India into foreign currency, not into Indian rupees. Get your FIRC issued and then and then only you will be able to uh, get the compliances in place. Now we are going to be moving forward to the FDI versus the FPI sector. Now what is FDI versus FPI? Very simple criteria. FPI is somebody who is uh, uh, listed, who is recognized by SEBI, who investment is done by a non-resident in the Indian uh, equity instrument. But if the instrument is below 10%, it will be considered as FDI. If it is above 10%, it will be considered as, sorry, uh, if, if it is below 10%, it will be considered as FPI for the listed entity. Uh, it does not matter who has the control. Uh, you need to, you know, your basic purpose is to see that there is a growth which you are getting via the financial markets. That is the main purpose of FPI. And FPI is allowed mainly in marketable securities, listed companies, government bonds. And there is a limit to which the FPIs can invest into India. Uh, which is mainly driven by the SEBI regulations in terms of the percentages and uh, all the compliances because they are regulated by the FPI. Sorry, SEBI. Now, FDI in unlisted sector, it is always going to be uh, FDI. If it is uh, FI is investing 10% or more in a listed company, it will turn into an FDI because now more than 10%, you're going to be having some kind of control, some kind of uh, influence. That's why they will consider it as FDI. Once an FDI will always remain an FDI, but if it is less than 10% and an listed company, then it will remain as an FDI. This is the basic understanding of FDI and FPI. Second topic that we said we will discuss is the downstream investment. Important here to understand is that if there is a person resident outside India, he invests in an Indian entity, let's say a company or an LLP, and then that Indian company is further investing down into a further any other Indian company or an entity, then this transaction will be called as downstream investment. Here one thing, logo ke tikram, especially our chartered accountants ke tikram zyada shuru ho jate. Uh, pehle mein regulation compliance bol deti hun, phir tikram pe jate. Regulation compliance is, in this scenario, you need to file form DI. And uh, it includes all kinds of uh, instruments for an investment. But now one thing, tikram, what happens here is, that a uh, lot of cases not direct FDI is not allowed. Matlab, agar koi sector aisa hai, just may FDI directly not allowed. So hum chartered accountants, hum company secretaries, royals, professionals, jinko client ko sub tarike se best sub karna hi karna or jor client ko chahiye wo dena hi dena. In that scenario, we try and come up with some jugadu structures which says it kaam karo. Main company may wo structure, wo, wo sector rakho, which is permissible. Or downstream may wo sector may pesa dal denge jahan pe allowed nahi hai. Which I mean is, let me give you an example. It says that, you know, uh, agriculture, example, agriculture sector you are not allowed. So what we'll say is, okay, let's invest into a service sector in step one, because that is 100% under automatic. And that Indian company will further invest into agricultural sector, 
बिकॉज अब तो इंडियन कंपनी इन्वेस्ट कर रही है ना कहाँ डायरेक्ट एफ डी आई आ रहा है सो दैट इज ऑल तिकड़म वी ट्राई टू अलाउ बट थियोरिटिकली आरबीआई से इज नॉट अलाउड डाउन स्ट्रीम में भी वही सेक्टर में इन्वेस्टमेंट अलाउड है जिसमें डायरेक्टली अलाउड है सो द लॉ इज वेटी सिंपल समथिंग विच इज नॉट अलाउड डायरेक्टली इज ऑल्सो नॉट अलाउड इन डायरेक्टली हो सके तिकड़म मत लगाओ Now this is going to be an explanation about what is a direct FDI and indirect FDI. The charts are self-explanatory. We'll not go into too much of detail on it because we need to also look at the Q and A and finish our session on time. I have taken here only two sectors. There are multiple sectors, uh, and lot of sectors have their own uh, sector-specific conditions. Uh, E-commerce has the sector. Manufacturing has the sector. Broadcasting has the sector. Print media as a sector, single brand retail trading, multi brand retail trading, oh hell lot of things. Cash and carry, wholesale trading. Sectors ki list. अगर मैं देखूँ तो conditions and sectors are going up to A B C D E F and हर एक F के अंदर भी multiple sectors के multiple sub provisions आ जाते हैं. But today we are only going to be touching upon two sectors, uh, just for the base of understanding of it. जैसे real estate sector है. रियल एस्टेट सेक्टर में 100 परसेंट ऑटोमेटिक रूट में एफ डी आई इज परमिटेड पहले बहुत सारी कंडीशन थी नाउ दो कंडीशन मिनिमलिस्टिक कंडीशन जस्ट मेक श्योर यू फुलफिल दो कंडीशन एंड द सेकेंड पार्ट इज ऑफ फार्मास्यूटिकल इंडस्ट्री विच इज अ ब्राउन फील्ड इन्वेस्टमेंट हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑटोमेटिक रूट अप टू सेवेंटी फोर परसेंट ग्रीन फील्ड ग्रीन फील्ड का मतलब है नया शुरू करेंगे तो ऑटोमेटिक ग्रीन फील्ड नया शुरू करेंगे 100% परसेंट ऑटोमेटिक नो परमिशन रिक्वायर्ड करंट वाला अगर करेंगे देन इन दैट केस अप टू 74% करेंगे अगर उससे बियॉन्ड जाना है तो गवर्नमेंट का अप्रूवल लेंगे यस राहुल दिस इज अंदी टॉपिक दैट्स आई एम ट्राइंग टू बी फास्टर एंड ट्राइंग टू कवर अप वी विल सी टू इफ इफ देर इज अड वी कैन एंड वील आस्ट टेक्स मैन टू हैव वन मोर लेक्चर ऑन दी अदर्स पार्ट आर ऑब्जेक्टिव टूडे वॉज टू कवर अपन द जनरल अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ एफ and the major loopholes and mistakes that people are making in today that was our main topic of conversation and trying to cover up today again as i said two major types greenfield and brownfield general rule non compete clause should not be allowed except in special circumstances you have to uh, maintain some production levels keep an r and d in place have a report on the technology that is being transfers agar ye sari cheeze aap kar loge then aapko brownfield mein allowed ho jayega real estate mein सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट जो नहीं अलाउड है जो आज तक सारे बिल्डरों की बैंड बजी हुए दे आर क्रिबिंग अपॉन इज एक तो उनको ईसी भी अलाउड नहीं है लोन दे आर नॉट अलाउड सेकंड थिंग अगर आप ट्रेडिंग करो तो नॉट अलाउड है वी विल नॉट अलाउ यू टू इंक्रीज द प्राइजेस व्हाट इट सेज इज कम टू इंडिया डू द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ रियल एस्टेट मेक टाउनशिप रोड बनाओ ब्रिजेस बनाओ होटल हॉस्पिटल जो बनाना है बनाओ पर कंस्ट्रक्ट करो अगर आप कंस्ट्रक्ट करोगे देन वी आर अलाउिंग यू अगर आप ट्रेडिंग करना चाहते हो देन वी आर नॉट अलाउिंग यू कंस्ट्रक्ट करने के बाद अगर आपका बेच नहीं पा रहे इसलिए अगर आपको उसको लीज पे लेना है तो आप लो कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं सो यू कैन कंस्ट्रक्ट डेवलप एंड देन पुट इट अप ऑन लीज देन देर इज नो रिस्ट्रिक्शन बट इफ यू आर जस्ट ट्राइंग टू यू नो बाय एंड सेल देन दैट इज नॉट परमिटेड इट विल हैव इट्स कंप्लायसेज इन टर्म्स ऑफ देर इज अ लॉक इन पीरियड विच इज नीड्स टू मेक श्योर थ्री ईयर का लॉक इन है पैसा आने के बाद उतना रखना पड़ेगा फिर ही आप जाके उसको बेच पाओगे और रिपैट्रिएट कर पाओगे दैट इज व्हाट इज बीन कंसर्न नाउ आई विल बी मूविंग ऑन टू क्यू एन ए बिफोर दैट यू गाइस कैन सी अ क्यूआर कोड ऑन द स्क्रीन सो देर इज अ व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप टैक्स एंड पेमा व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप वेर इन पीपल लाइक आस पोस्ट देयर क्वेरीज एंड पीपल लाइक आस ओनली शेयर देर नॉलेज एंड इट्स एन एक्सचेंज प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर query resolving doubt resolving but it is a curated group hence you will not be added to the group directly once you put in a request to join somebody from the tax and fema whatsapp group team will reach out to you share you a google form you need to fill in the details once you have filled it then you will be added to the group to make sure the group is not spammed and uh, you're able to add value so whoever wish can join the whatsapp group by a Uh, joining the qr code if there is any query i am there i know i have rushed a lot today uh, but try to make sure i have able to answer all the queries or questions in the basic front if there is anything more i am happy to take it up later on also or we will just take up the questions that are there right now 
can rights and entitlement uh, be sold if existing investor doesn't want to invest yes vishwajit it can be uh, second question is uh, mudrak asking when indian employee uh, of indian subsidiary gets esops of parent us company is there any reporting to rbi to be done by employee when he sells them in the us market see first of all when you would have received mudrak ji when you have received the funds you would have transferred the funds when you have transferred the fund at that time you would have already done the reporting under the lrs so that reporting is in place uh, when you are selling the shares there is no reporting that is required to be done at that point in time but when you receive the funds in your account you will have to instruct accordingly do we need to file form fc gpr for subscription to moa or aoa for a new in company incorporation yes vijay the moment the funds are coming into india be it at the time of subscription or later on there is a compliance that needs to be done uh, if the funds are coming in india into the indian company form fcgpr will be filed but if it is coming uh, via you know share transfer between the founders then form fctrs needs to be filed but yes compliance is compulsory if not filed what is the way to file now go ahead and file it fcgpr reporting is an online process on the firm's portal you need to do the filing but you need to make sure all the documentation is in place go ahead and do it on the firm's portal uh, navin ji is asking madam what if accounts are not audited for filing fla not a problem at all sir if accounts are not audited yet you can go ahead and do the fla ka form filing uh, there is a provision which allows that if uh, you know there is a change and you need to update the form you can do that too if after audit you realize that there is a lot of change i filed form fcj gpr for issue and allotment of ccps now we are converting the ccps into equity do we need to file fcj gpr again no i don't think you need to file if investment is made by and if investment is made by an nri from his nro account in india will it be considered as fdi and what will be the status if it is from his nre account amul uh, if the funds are coming from his nro account it is considered on non repatriation basis in which scenario uh, there is no filing uh, it is advisable that you take it on record uh, keep it with the company on record from the investor saying that he has invested on non repatriation basis from his nro account so that in future if there is ever there is any inquiry you can showcase it that yes the investor has informed us that he has invested from his nro account and intends to invest in on non repatriation if the funds are coming from his nre account then it is on repatriable basis in which scenario all the fcgpr compliances that we just spoke of or we have been speaking in last 30 40 minutes all will be applicable fi invested in indian company for 8% equity when unlisted then company got listed same fi wants to buy again if the listed and <laughs> uh, vishwajit i'll like to take it up later because we have less second than i need to think over this as of now so i'll take it up in the last can indian company with majority shareholder being foreign individual may buy land for construction of residential premises and can they sell such premises by their own name uh, so hp if it is your business is into construction and development of real estate then fdi into real estate business construction and development is allowed you just need to make sure real estate sector ki jo conditions hai construct karo fir sell karo wo aap kar pa rahe ho so then it is allowed Will it be possible to transact through Vostro Nostro account? Yes, Piyush. Vostro Nostro is allowed. That is not a trouble. Only those exchange platforms were trouble. Speak to your banker before doing the transaction. Tell them we need the FIRC. Lot of time, what happens is your bank will not issue you the FIRC, but the funds which the bank which had received the funds, they will issue you the FIRC. But that is not a trouble. Just get that thing in place. a uh, sham can a ca located in india advising a uae client receive professional fees in rupees from uae bank through his indian bank uh, fees in rupees from uae bank through his indian bank sir sham i am not able to understand but i can tell you one thing if it's export of services you need to receive in foreign currency if you wish to receive in rupees make it an indian transaction receive it in rupees nobody stops you service industry pe itna control nahi hai jitna foreign uh, goods pe control hai बोनस इश्यू में प्राइसिंग गाइडलाइंस एप्लीकेबल कैसे होगी कैसे होगी ईशा पैसे ही नहीं आ रहे फ्री में तो दे रहे हैं सो प्राइसिंग गाइडलाइंस विल नॉट बी एप्लीकेबल टू बोनस इश्यू हाँ ओरिजिनल शेयर्स इश्यू हुए होंगे उस पर इश्यू 
उसपे शेयर उसपे प्राइजिंग गाइडलाइंस इश्यू हुई होगी बट आई लाइक इशा एटलीस्ट आपने सोचा हर्षित सेस डू वी नीड टू फाइल फॉर्म ओपीआई व्हेन इसो पर ग्रांटेड बाय फॉरेन कंपनी टू इंडियन एम्प्लॉइज आई एम नॉट श्योर ऑन द ओपीआई फ्रंट हर्षित आई नीड टू गेट बैक टू यू ऑन दिस इश्यूएंस ऑफ एफआरसी स्टॉप लॉन्ग टाइम बैक आई एम सॉरी सर इश्यूएंस ऑफ एफआरसी हैज नॉट स्टॉप टुडे आल्सो यू आर रिसीविंग यू विल रिसीव इट इन सॉफ्ट कॉपी इट इज फॉरेन इनवर्स रेमिटेंस सर्टिफिकेट इट इज स्टिल रिसीव्ड फॉर एवरी ट्रांजैक्शन एवरी फंड्स दैट आर कमिंग इनटू इंडिया uh thank you so much i know i have rushed you guys but i hope i was able to do justice in the initial part uh, and thank you very much if you have any queries we are there look forward to discussing it again over to you nishchal thank you thank you so much your claps makes me feel good ki maine itna bola to it's not bad Uh, thank you, speaker, for your outstanding presentation and a clear, concise explanation of the subject matter. We greatly appreciate the efforts that you have put into making this session a success. I would also like to thank the participants for their cooperation and contributions. We could not have done it without you. Although we have attempted to address the queries raised during the session, please feel free to send any additional queries in writing to sales at taxman dot com. Thank you all again we look forward to presenting another vital topic to you soon until then take care and have a wonderful time bye everybody thank you so much